This is Concrete Faith Assembly with Pastor Gospower Edo, a man of God loaded with messages that are targeted at rishi minds and with the mandate of liberating people from all forms of frustrations and oppression. In Jesus' name we will pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this moment. We bless your name, Lord, because of the great things you are doing. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that your children share among the brethren. We thank you, Lord God, for the wonderful way, Lord God, you have proved yourself in our midst. Father, be thy exalted and glorified in Jesus' name. And Lord, we call upon you this morning to intervene and to open our heart and minds. And as we're going to hear your word, Lord God, we'll be stirred up in the spirit and act accordingly in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for prayer and answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say big amen. amen. We are talking this moment about being stirred up in another dimension. We are going to be stirred up in another dimension. And that is why the message is titled, Awake to a more desperate recovering effort. Awake to a more desperate recovering effort. We have to awake as some people that are sleeping. As somebody that is sleeping, slumbering. The instruction this moment is that you should awake. And you should not just awake and begin to play and begin to talk things that are not real. But you will awake to a more desperate recovery effort. There is something that you have lost that needed to be recovered absolutely this moment. And you have to be desperate to get it recovered. And the effort you are going to put up is going to make you to stand to recover in Jesus' name. There were some people that were very desperate in scripture. When you look at Matthew chapter 9, and you read from verse 22 to 22, Matthew chapter 9, I just want you to turn to that scripture, Matthew chapter 9, and in verse 20 to 22, he said, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and turned the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But when Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her and said, Daughter, be of good cheer, thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Praise the Lord. This is a woman that was absolutely desperate to get at Jesus. To be desperate is to break many barriers and many mountains and to engage in many things that will make you to look like somebody who wants something that you must get. It's not to be desperate. It's when you act without having any recourse to the danger that is ahead. Especially when you are in a situation in a very tight corner and there appears to be nothing else to do than to take the risk. That is when we say you are desperate. So somebody that is desperate is somebody that is in trouble, that the trouble is almost getting out of hand, and they have no option than to say, I want to take a final step, a very, very desperate step to break myself and get myself free. And so we are going to get into that realm this moment. And we are told that we should awake to this kind of desperate move. There was a case in 2 Samuel chapter 23. Just look at 2 Samuel chapter 23, in verse 14 to 16. And David was then in an hole, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the hosts of the Philistine and drew water out of the well of the Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. This was a case of three hefty men, strong men of David, that break through a barrier. They were desperate, not just desperate. But they were more desperate than ever. The Philistines were enemies, and they were the people that they are having the well. 
And David desired to drink of the water of the well of the Philistine, but that was in Bethlehem. And it was not just that drinking that water, there was a garrison of Solia. There was a protection around the well of the premises of the well. And to get there means that you are taking a very high risk. Because the army, the garrison of people there will confront you. But the three hefty men, they break through the barrier. They took a risk. They said, no, we must arise and wait to a more desperate effort to recover the water from this well of our master. And they went and took from that well. The first water from the well that came to them. Luke chapter 18. When Jesus Christ gave us a parable, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. He said, And he speak a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faith. Say, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. You know, I want you to look up. There was a judge in the city. This judge feared not God, neither regarded the position of men. It is one thing for somebody to say, I fear no man. But I fear God. For somebody not to fear God and fear man, it means that that person is dangerous. If you dare to attack or confront such a person, he will shoot you like Surya. And that is the reason why we are saying that the woman came up and said, Avenge me of my adversaries. And he was troubling this judge who feared neither God nor man. And the woman took a very great risk. Somebody who fears not God, fear not man. And it's a judge. He can give an instruction that put this man in jail, put this woman in jail, behead this man, behead this woman. He fear not God. You know, some people will just say, as you are seeing me, I fear no man. It's only God and fear. I mean, you heard such things, am I right? But this is somebody who neither fear God nor fear man. And the woman said, I am going to tell him. What we mean by awakening to a more desperate attempt and effort to recover what you lost is with that. You have to dare situations that ordinarily cannot be dead. Today, you are going to dare situations. I say you are going to dare situations. You know, there is nothing you cannot receive if you are the type that can dare situations. And the reason why we want you to awake to a more desperate recovery effort is that we want you to receive and recover what you have lost and what you think that you ought to have that you don't have. Praise the Lord. And you must understand that God desired that every of his children must be as bold as he is himself. I want to see situations that can lead us into the mood of being desperate. There are some situations that should lead somebody into the mood of being desperate. There are some situations that you look at and say, no, I have no option that to be desperate. We want to look at four such situations. Number one situation. When we seem to have lost our salvation and even the gift of the Spirit. When you discover that you have lost your salvation and the gift of the Spirit. You hear me and hear me very well. Jesus Christ came that we might have salvation, we might be redeemed from the cause of the law. And if in the process of moving on as a Christian, and you discover that by omission or commission, you lost your salvation and the gift of the Spirit, you are to dare to come out and say, God, this cannot happen. You are to dare to awake to a more desperate effort to recover your salvation. Let nobody deceive you. You can lose your salvation. When you go into immorality, into fornication and adultery, into necromancy, into lying, into stealing, into things that have to burn on idol worship and such things, you can slide back from the faith. And when you slide back from the faith, you are doomed except you come back to the Lord. And that is why we are saying that you should make a more desperate effort but adventure you lost your salvation. Because Jesus Christ has come to give it to us free of charge. Therefore, if you are here or there, I hear the sound of my voice, and you lost your salvation as David did in Psalm chapter 51. David cried unto the Lord. 
He said, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Back it from verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And upon me with thy free spirit. You know, when you're at salvation level, when you receive salvation, you have the Spirit of God. And the service was saying, Cast me not from thy presence. I withdraw, and I withdraw not thy Holy Spirit from me. And that is why we are saying that. If you lost your salvation, you will pray desperately to be restored. You will pray and cry to the God, God, come to me and restore me. And in the process, if you have the Spirit of God, that can deal you with the gift of the Spirit. And eventually the gift of the Spirit packed up because you lost your salvation. You will cry. You will say, God, have mercy on me. You say, God, come to my aid. You say, God, that was what David did. There was a great, there is a great man of God in this country. Hear me. He lost his salvation. And eventually, he was pushed aside from the pulpit. To the extent that people started making jest of him. You know, somebody went, somebody passed by on the faith. And maybe the person had been so prominent before and had been so vocal, had been so touching through the message and the speeches. People who were almost his enemy before instead of embracing him and encouraging him, they just started making noise. You see, if he's coming, he will just be bending down his head. He was so much ashamed of himself. Then he went into prayer of restoration. Say, God restore me. God restore me. God restore me. This is something what we are saying. What we are saying is that if such a thing happened to you here or there, hear me and hear me very well. That what God wants to do is to work to a more desperate recovering effort of your stolen salvation. Because the thief coming but the stick to kill and to what? Don't destroy. But Jesus has come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. And that is the reason why if you are here or there, you lost your salvation. Hear me away. You lost the gift of the Spirit. Hear me away. God is saying you should away to a more desperate recovering effort. And this man prayed that it was God, I'm sorry. God have your way. And eventually God restored him. The first time he came to minister, cripples started rising. Blind. This church is breezing. Today is an international preacher. Can you hear me? I want to tell you, I'm not encouraging you to go into sin. But eventually, if you lost your salvation, hear me and hear me away. You are not to give up. What you need to do is to away to a more desperate recovery effort. And you pray and say, God, there is, there is nothing you cannot recover yourself. If you go into a desperate prayer, and we are saying today that somebody here and there, you are going into a desperate prayer of recovering your stolen destiny in Jesus' name. Hear me very well. We said number one, because we are talking about those situations that can make you to go into such prayers. Situations that can lead you into the root of being desperate. We said number one, when you lost your salvation and the gift of the Spirit. And when you do that, you know it is no more there. Maybe you were ministry before, and uh, you know that when you minister, certain things happen, and they are no longer happening. Withdraw. I say, God, I come to you. And if you know that your salvation is gone as a result of sin, come back to God and say, God, Jesus Christ died for me. I will lift him up in the name of Jesus. And when you lift him up, he will bring more men to the kingdom in Jesus' name. Then number two, we said number one, when you seem to have lost your salvation and the gift of the Spirit. Two, when an affliction seems to overwhelm you. Well, you see that scripture we read in Matthew chapter 9. The woman of the issue of blood. In Matthew chapter 9, we read that scripture verse 20 to 22. The woman of the issue of blood. She said, no. This affliction has overwhelmed me. I've gone to many physicians. Some have generally given me fake drugs. Some people charge me very expensively and nothing happened. This one around, this time around, I come to the man of Calvary. I come to the man of the cross. I come to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And she heard that Jesus Christ was in the place preaching. And the crowd was so thick. This woman was moving. Was moving. This guy was touching the hem of his garment. If I can but turn the hem of his garment, I will be free. The woman started going. He awoke to a more desperate recovery effort. Hear me and hear me well. Anyone 
that I wish to a more desperate effort to recover what he has lost. Because the woman who heard it before, she was not born with the issue of blood. It was something that came suddenly on her. And she felt, no, it cannot continue. I must recover my original self. I must go into prayers. I must touch the hem of his garment. You know, I have a friend. A pastor friend came here just last week. And he was telling me something. What's the matter? He had a very serious case. And this case we call the prostrate enlargement. She can, he cannot be related. And he was so tough. And each time they will rush him. Each time he will call me on phone. Each time he will, ah. He said one day, he said, No, it is written. Tell somebody it is written. He took his Bible. He said he started praying. He started praying. He was on fasting. He was on prayer. He was on fasting. He was on prayer. He was on prophetic fasting. That is, he will pick the word of God and speak it to the situation. That's what I mean by prophetic prayer. And what happened was that normally every day, every night, he was in trouble. He was in trouble. But that night passed on the fasting. There was no problem. Two days elapsed. He was okay. Three days he was okay. Four days. One week. He said, What? Two weeks. Three weeks. Four weeks. A month. Two months. Three months. Four. Praise the Lord. There is nothing you cannot challenge if you are weak to a more desperate recovering efforts of prayers. Although we meant challenge later. And that was why. But the truth is this. As long as you believe, because there is one particular sickness ailment, that's what we are talking about now. If there is an affliction, a recurring problem, sickness, it comes and go, comes and go, comes and go. You say, no, I can't take this anymore. You have to wait to a more desperate recovery effort. You will recover in Jesus' name. I say, if you take it up, you will recover in Jesus' name. There are times you need to take things the extraordinary way. There are times you need to say, no, I'm going to extra mile. There are times you need to say, no, I'm not going to be the pastor. There are times you need to say, no, I, will, I don't handle this case myself. You handle it. And God will honor you in Jesus' name. So I told you that the situation that can warrant and lead us into such desperate rest, number one, when we seem to have lost our salvation and the gift of the Spirit. Two, when an affliction seems to overwhelm us, then number three, when something or someone precious to you seems to be missing out of your life. Somebody or something precious to you seems to be missing out of your life. You know there are times when something you treasure so much, maybe your husband, somebody is taking your husband out. Somebody is, your husband no longer eats your food so much. You just say, I'm feeling I'm okay. You know, like sometimes when he comes from outside, you see lipstick rubbing his shoulders and all this stuff. You say, No, somebody is taking my husband. Somebody is taking my wife. You take it to God in prayer. You become more desperate in prayers. You take God this issue. I'm not taking it light. I want to do at that time. That is a situation that can lead into taking such action. That is to say, when something or someone that is precious and close to you is being taken away. Then number four, when an expectation is over delayed. You know some people, there are some expectations that are over delayed. You know the Bible says that look the fact they get the heart sick. When an expectation is over delayed, and then you have the expectation through revelation, or you have it through inspiration, or you have this true personal desire, you know the desire of the righteous ought to be granted, or you have it through enemies and you have been expecting and expecting the situation, and nothing is happening. What you do is that you have to wait away to a more desperate recovery efforts. You are saying, No, this time around I'm not going the normal way. I want to do something extra. I want to do something, I want to go extra mile. And if you go extra mile, the Lord will honor the prayer in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will honor the prayer in Jesus' name. I want us to look how to become desperate. How do we really become desperate? 
We are talking about the situation that will make us to be desperate. We want to look at how to become desperate. How do you really become desperate? Because the bottom line is that we have to be desperate. How do you become desperate? That is what we want to look now. To become desperate. How do we become desperate? Number one, you have to engage the right words in prayers. To be desperate is being using the right words in prayer. In most cases, we use the wrong words when we pray. But when you come to God, using the right words and say, No! A word that is properly used in due season is a desperate word. Listen, when we talk about being, 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 being desperate, it may appear us absurd, but the truth is that when things are getting out of hand, and when you know that the situation is no longer under control, you have to take some dangerous steps. When you take dangerous steps that are likely to use fruit, then you are desperate. And what we're saying at this point is this. To be desperate at this point means that you are going to take radical steps. How do you take them? How are you going to become desperate? Number one, to engage the right words in prayer. Job chapter 6. Job chapter 6. I want you to look at it. We're going to read verse 25 to 26. Job chapter 6, verse 25. How forcible are right words? How forcible? Forcible means how forceful, how penetrating, how sharp. How forcible in verse 25. How forcible are right words? But what does your arguing reproach? It's nothing. What my words are forcible? That's what it says. Do you imagine to reprove words? And the speech of one that is desperate, which are as wind. You know, the speech of one that is desperate and as wind, the words fly, but you can't hold them. You know, sometimes when we begin to minister to people who are possessed with demon spirits and that, when you be praying and praying and praying and after you quote a scripture, it is written, the demon will try and run away. And that is when you will know that. These are possible ways that are used. To become desperate, you have to engage ways and the right ways at the right time. That is number one. That is how to become desperate. Number two, to be desperate, you have to make random inquiries for the solution. Even as David did when Ziegland was born down. If you look at Samuel, first Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to 15, the city of Ziglag was born down. And when David came and the men, they started crying the weeping. So what is happening? Oh, we are gone. And two wives of David were captured. Their daughters and children were captured. They were arrested. They were taken hostage. And David and the people were crying until they could have no strength to cry. Then David consulted with the Lord. You must make inquiry. As you are praying, consult books. There are books that people wrote that are pertaining to your case. You make inquiry. You don't just pray and pray. As you are praying, you make inquiry. Consult books. Read books of great men of God. Listen to their tips. And hear what they are saying. Because we are told that the experience is the best teacher. Those people who have experience, they will tell you the other things. So, by the grace of God, one of the ways to become desperate is to make random inquiries and to get solution to problems that are around. Make random this thing. And when you do that, honestly speaking, you will be fully engaged in Jesus' name. Number three. Take certain dangerous steps that might appear very risky. Take certain dangerous steps. Hear me very well. If you listen to the story I told you about David that was drinking from the water of Bethlehem, 
David, they took very deadly risk. Hello? You have to take some steps. If you have something that is dear to you that is missing from your life, and you have prayed, you have done this, you've done that, take some steps. It's not just about prayers alone. Take some steps. Say, no, I'm going to take this step. If I perish, I do what? You take some steps. And when you take such steps, I assure you, victory will be yours in Jesus' name. Something happened some years ago. There was a lady. This lady was, was not actually married. But somebody had a child with this lady. And this lady was not from the environment. It was one from one part of this country. I don't want to mention that part because the story is not too good. And they had a child with this man, this young man. And they decided to take the child. So they, they, just, they just decided to call. He came and they took the child from her that she's not going with the child. The lady said, you are liars. So they went and hit the child. They ran away. The lady became desperate. You know what she did? The lady, it was dry season, and there was not much water in where then. The lady jumped into a well. And said she was committing suicide. People started shouting. What's the word? So they went to the well and told her, I beg, come out, come out, come out. He said, No, where is my child? He said, We are going to bring the child. He said, Bring the child. So they ran there and brought the child and presented. said, they look at the child there. He said, climb down the well here and give me the child. Are you listening to me? The lady was desperate. So they didn't want somebody to commit suicide on their head. They took the child, climbed down. One man climbed down. The man said, at least you cannot kill me in the well. Praise the Lord. The man climbed down with the child, handed the child over to her, and they brought her out. And she traveled home with her child. Are you listening to me? That is how to become desperate. The woman became desperate. No, you can't deceive me and take my child from me. I will do something. I will go extra mile. I will do something that will threaten you. What I will say? We must awake to a more desperate recovery effort. She recovered her child. Did she not? Even if it was a negative way, a method she used. She recovered her child. And the child was given to her. And what I'm telling you here is this. No matter what you are passing through, if you resort and awake to a more desperate recovery effort, that thing will be yours in Jesus' name. You must awake to a more recovery effort. You must say, go on. I cannot continue like that. So, number four. Keep pursuing even when your strength seems to fail you. Keep pursuing even when your efforts seem to fail. You know, there are times when we really pray. Our strength is little. But in most cases, God works more with us when we are weak. And that was what he told Paul. Hear me very well. Many people, because the matter has been so long, I have fasted, I have prayed. I have given, I have done this, done that, they become weary. No. Look at Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8. I, I, I love that. I love that much. I love that much. Judges chapter 8. I read just this. Judges chapter 8, verse 4. Are you there? And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he. And the 300 men that were with him, faith yet pursuing them. Faith yet pursuing them. You see, sometimes let me tell you one secret. The greatest secret to victory is that when you are weak, you are praying. Sleep just to go and you are yawning. There is strength, there is anointing, there is power for having the issue somewhere. When you are weak, don't be discouraged. Say sleep, they catch me home. Don't be weak. Once you are weak, you are so tired, you are so weary, you are so bored. Then 
there, there is much power, there is much strength, there is much anointing. Doing something somewhere. That is what the Lord is. Look at Second Corinthians. Let me tell you. Look at Second Corinthians, chapter twelve. Second Corinthians, chapter twelve. What did the Lord say? He was talking to Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle was so confused because he was asking something of the Lord. He was having an infirmity. And he kept praying and kept praying. He kept asking and asking. He kept praying and praying that God told him something. In verse 8 to 9. First Corinthians chapter 12. Are you there with me? For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength, my anointing, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities than the power of Christ be rest upon me. Well, listen, listen to me. When you think there's not everything, the hope is gone. When you are so weak, you are so demoralized, and there's no much power strength to pray, and you are going to be famishing because of fasting. Then there is an anointing working somewhere. Hello? Are you listening to me? When there is that kind of weakness in you, you see, you see my strength is in weakness. Oh, Pastor, close this service. We are tired. We have been praying this morning. I have not eaten. Now, I tell you, that is that is anointing. Tell somebody it is anointing. Tell him it is anointing. I want to make you understand that God desires that we all here and then she will walk tirelessly and awake to a more desperate effort to recover that which is stolen from us. Anything that has been stolen from you, anything you have dreamt to have, anything that you have imagined to have, you know the Bible said that as a man thinketh, so he is. Anything you think about her, the desire of the righteous be granted. Anything you desire to have, Anything you have dreamt about, anything that have been prophesied of you, anything you have talked about, I mean, I say, awake yourself to a more desperate effort to recover that thing and take that thing back. Because know it that that thing belongs to you, but there is a power that seems to be preventing you, depriving you from having that thing. But today, I say, have it in Jesus' name. I say, have it in Jesus' name. Don't be afraid of anything, anybody. This ministry is about faith. Conquering faith assembly. We conquer by faith. We don't conquer by sight. We don't conquer by imagination. We show faith. And the best way to show faith is to impress on that man, that woman, that say you cannot get what belongs to you. That he that is in you, completely for me, is greater than he that is in the world. And the man that was a little prayer led one prayer and said you should go to uh, Isaiah 54, verse 16 and 17. You heard it? They must surely gather, but not by you. He said, Who made the instrument for blowing this and blowing? He said, I made it. No weapon. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And in the tongue that shall rise against you. In judgment, thou, 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 you do. You will condemn in Jesus' name. Hear me. As we are going into prayer, I want you to do something for me. Just assume that you have been slumbering, you have been sleeping. Now I know I have been sleeping. I have been slumbering. But today, I awake to a more desperate effort of recovery. That which you have from me. Open your mother prayer. I awake today. And I